Welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. We are uh, just me, probably um, at least through the end of the year, while young Jacob Wolf is out uh, getting himself better and uh, getting his mind right. Um, uh, so excited to have you back here on the Hey Man podcast with us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, a huge thanks to everybody who listens and watches and the people that are coming out to the shows and the watching the special. Thank you all so much. It's meant a whole lot. Um, the support and especially the support, um, uh, for Jacob and for what's been happening with us. So thank you guys so much. It means a lot. Um, as usual, what I'll probably do, um, uh, at the beginning of every podcast until he comes back. Um, and by the way, I got a lot of your, uh, suggestions about who we should have come guest pod and a bunch of those people will be coming in. Um, just a quick update on uh, my where I'm at in my mental. I am. It's been quite a roller coaster, everybody. There's some days where I'm like, "This, I, I got this," and this is, um, you know, and I've never shied away from challenges or been a dude who, um, who uh doesn't face things head on. And there are most days where I'm like, I got this and let's go. And I like a challenge and I like, I like it when life comes and throws a hard, you know, left hook in your face. Um, because that's what life does, man. I, and, um, I generally have a very good outlook with things like that. And then there are days like yesterday and today where, just like everybody else, you have days where you're like, fuck this. Like, I'm just moving to Joshua Tree and I'm I'm going to become a barista. Like, this is what the fuck, what am I pushing this fucking rock up this fucking hill for, for my entire life? And so like, like all you guys, um, good days and bad days, I'm, I'm lucky and feel very grateful that I've done uh, enough work with my own mental, uh, where I know this is just, uh, one of those little patches and nobody is happy every day of their life. And the people who are, are the people you need to check in on <laughs> anyone who pretends like everything is great every day. Those people are one step closer to the edge than the rest of us for sure. Um, so just giving you a little heads up on that and where I am as, because as usual, um, I am pretty upfront about who I am and how I'm feeling. Um, but that never stops me from doing my job or checking in with you guys. I've had so much fun on the lives on my, uh, Facebook and, uh, YouTube pay channels the last couple of weeks with you guys. It's been a ton of fun. There have been so many of you, um, who have been joining in. So that's been amazing, but yeah, that's just been a quick little check-in. Um, but let me get to a couple of your emails, um, that I just wanted to read out loud. Uh, so to acknowledge you and to let you know how much these meant to me, um, this is from Leanne. I'm not going to read your last names. Um, um, I watched the special. It was amazing and hysterical. Thank you so much. You helped me through some of the hardest times of my life. And I even turned my two daughters into huge fans of yours. When in Austin for one of your shows last year, my 19 and 22 year old daughters get to meet Trevor and Jacob. And they were so wonderful to my girls. You've raised these boys well. To this day, they still talk about it. You also took a minute to speak directly to my youngest, who was too shy to come up and get on stage for a photo. And you have no idea how much that meant to her. It gave her some confidence. Also, I'm including two photos from the Austin show in 2023. In the first, in the back, you can see Jacob and Trevor with my daughters. And the second photo is the one where you took the time to talk to my youngest. What you can't possibly know is that she was struggling with suicidal issues and had only recently been released from hospitalization. That night and the time you took with her brought her back to me. I owe you so much gratitude. What you do literally saves lives. I know it for a fact because it saved my daughter. Guys, this is really the kind of stuff, and Lee, thank you so much for sending that to me. Um, that kind of stuff means so much to me, truly. Uh, but this is the kind of stuff, this is why, man, this is the stuff that as I've gotten older really matters. 
This is it, man. That kind of stuff. That 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 to to know that my dick jokes somehow help save lives. You know, I think that show in Austin, I might have done a couple of fart jokes too. And so, um, but it means so much to hear that and to know that, man, that 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 helped you and your daughter. So thank you so much. Because these emails mean so much to me. They really do. Patty says, uh, Patty Wagner with everything going on with Jake, this is what he would have wanted. You blew this out of the water. Thank you for giving me personally this gift of laughter. You're awesome. Much love and support. Thank you, Patty. Uh, Dave, my buddy, excellent job on the special. Cuts were great. Rodness made for personal feel. The stories were hilarious. I swear I could feel myself in that Ikea bathroom. By the way, it was so relatable. This definitely was your best special since Father of the Year. And every bit of praise coming your way is well deserved. Guys, you know, um, this, this special was was really personal to me just because of how many people told me it not to do it. It's never going to work. Don't shoot it this way. You can't just do more just for stories. Um, nobody has the, the, uh, nobody pays attention to the long stories anymore. It's all TikTok in 60 seconds. And, um, I just, I refuse to believe that. And I, refuse to believe that there aren't people out there who have attention spans more than 60 seconds. And so thank you so much for appreciating that. Let's read a couple more of these. Rachel Oaks. First of all, you killed the special. Thank you. Second, thank you for always bringing the laughter to the next level. I appreciate that. For always being authentic and unapologetic. Well, you're going to get a whole lot of that today. You're going to get a fucking whole lot of that today for sure. Your comedy is always top tier. For this supporter, thank you. You should bring Indiana Jones on the podcast. Yo, dude, not only did we have to put Jacob in rehab, Matt, I don't know if you know this, we had to put Indiana Jones in rehab. Really? He was gone for the last week from my house. He His his behavior was just getting worse and worse, and his anxiety was just getting worse and worse. And we had to send him, the only person he was listening to was me. And he was bullying people and he was just a menace. And so I, 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 I can't have that. And so we had to send him away for a week to, we just picked him up yesterday. Yo, he, and so they gave us this little collar. This not a shock, but it basically, you know, like those, uh, those things people put on their abs that contract your muscles. Mm -hmm. It's one of those. Mm -hmm. So you can see him. It, he twitches like, he fucking hates it so much, but it's just a reminder because he would just not listen to Beth at all. Yeah. Did you ever watch the uh, dog whisperer? He came on my talk show. So, uh, you know how he does that little poke where is it? Yeah. You know, because it breaks the dogs out of like, their, that's what it is. Yeah. Their, um, their focus. Yeah. They, so it, it just brings them back mm -hmm. to focus, to focus, man. He, Indiana Jones, <laughs> hates that <laughs> so much like now and, and he and they simplified like what he needed to do uh but he looked for permission today he so he hits the collar so much already anything out of the norm when we were on the walk he looked at me like cool if i poop i'm like yeah, dude you don't have to ask permission to poop um but he do he is in line man a and beth was like it must be hard for him because he thought he was ruling the roost, bro. He was straight up. When he got out of that crate in the morning, he was like, this is my fucking place. Especially when I left. Beth said he would walk around like, like, yeah, I don't, I'm not listening to what you said. Just put some more food in the fucking bowl, bitch. You know, that was basically his thing. And now she's got the, the, the remote. If you, if he sees you pick up the remote, he sits. <laughs> He just is like, I don't know what I was doing, but I'm going to sit right now. Dude, you, he picks up the remote. You pick up the remote. And he's just like, I, I'm a dog. I'm sitting. I'm doing exactly what you want. Sometimes, and we've only had him back for a day, dude. You pick up the remote and he runs right into his kennel like, yep, I'm in here. I don't even know. Were you going to press the button? Because I don't need you to press the button. And there are three levels to the, ah, that poor little buddy when he picked him up. Because you know they're, 
he's a rescue dog. Mm-hmm. So when you drop him off at a place like that, he, he doesn't, all he thinks is, oh, fuck, am I back in one of these joints, you know? So when we saw him, when we went to pick him up, he was, his energy was like go, 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 crazy, but he had the collar on. So he would be like getting ready to go crazy and she would give him a quick little tap and he'd be like, oh, <laughs> and you could see it in his whole body. He was just like trembling, like, well, I want to run over there, but I know I can't. I know I can't. But it was really, it's going to be really good for him I, because his anxiety level do through the roof. And I can only imagine how terrible it is to feel that way all the time. When somebody leaves, you're like, are they ever coming back? You know? And so I'm super glad. I'm happy for him. I'm so happy to have him back. It was so weird putting both my little boys in rehab in the same week. It, oh, also, you had your dad and uh, <sighs> the release of a new special. Like your stress levels must have been like astronomical. Yeah, dude. My, my, my stress level has been a little bananas. And then to stop weed was like... So the thing you need to de-stress. <laughs> yeah. Stop. I mean, I'm stopping weed, obviously, to be in lockstep with Jacob, you know? Mm-hmm. But it is true. Your kids ruin everything for you. Uh, <laughs> I have started writing jokes about him in rehab. Did I tell you? No. I have started writing jokes. Like, the other night I hopped on stage and I was like, man, because I need to let everybody know. Not everybody knows. Oh, I got to tell you what fucking crazy would happen in Lexington. And then, but first, okay. As my own sobriety is coming into focus, I'm digging deeper and deeper into Best Day Brew. It tastes delicious. It makes me feel like I'm drinking a real beer because it tastes like a real beer. And I'm going to be honest with you, I cannot wait to crack one open with Jacob Wolf when he gets out. I know at 27, he's probably worried about who I'm going to be, who am I going to be without drugs? Am I going to be interesting? How am I going to socialize? And how am I going to feel normal? And I'll tell you something, this best day brew and drinking it out of the can and the way it tastes and the nostalgia it brings back has normalized that for me. It took me a while to get used to not drinking because everybody drinks, man. And you feel like out of place and you feel like, how am I going to socialize with these people? And best day brew is really, not only does it taste good, as good as any beer I've ever tasted, but it does make me feel less like, oh, everybody, look at this, the guy who's not drinking, this is the guy who's not drinking, which um, I know for a lot of us is a huge thing. So Best Day Brew, everybody, uh, is such an amazing tasting beer. And uh, the guy who runs a gym is such a good dude. So um, if you're looking for a great tasting beer and you're not looking for the alcohol, this is your one for you, everybody, Best Day Brew. Uh, before I get into those, guys, Denver, Colorado, um, I'm taking a week off for my birthday. My birthday is October 19th. I am um, I'm going to see My Chemical Romance here in Vegas at the While We Were Young, When We Were Young um, festival. My Chem is a, that Black Parade album was a album that me, uh, Trevor, Caitlin, Jacob, and Beth would sing from song one to the last song in our minivan. It brings back such visceral emotion and bring what I love about music, unlike any other art form, is it brings you back to the time of when it was important to you. So this brings me back to some of the best times of my life in that minivan with my whole family. And we're all bummed that Jakey won't be there, but so cool to be able to spend that night with my oldest, with, J- with Trevor and Kate and Beth. Um, so I'm taking, I'm, I'll be here. I also, if you are in Vegas, October 17th, I just picked up two shows at Kimmel's October 17th. Um, I'm, I'm doing the seven 30 and nine 30 shows. Um, so if you're in Vegas at that time, Denver, Colorado comedy works downtown, October 24th, to 26th, um, Omaha, Nebraska, funny bone, November 7th to 9th. Both those weekends always sell out guys. So you want to get your tickets to those a aura. Also, I'm in Chicago on, um, I think the 10th, um, at the comedy festival there, November 10th at the comedy festival there. So you want to get all your tickets also guys. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. People ask all the time how you can help. 
You can help by liking, subscribing, commenting on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. All that stuff makes such a huge difference. And if you haven't watched the special, just go to fourstoriescomedy.com. The word for storiescomedy.com. It'll take you right to it. Also, even if you are like, man, I hate this, but I like Josh, just let it play. You don't have to listen to it. Just let it play. And if you share and comment, it helps me and helps the algorithm. I'm doing all of this without the help of other podcasts, without promotions. I had to cancel all of that because of Jacob. Happily, I'm not complaining. But because of that, we're, it's just, just Matt and I trying to push this motherfucker out. It's mostly just you. <laughs> so, so we could really uh, use any help that you're willing to give. Um, fourstoriescomedy.com, guys. I really appreciate it. Super proud of the podcast. Let me tell you about the joke of the special and the podcast. Let me tell you a couple of the jokes that I'm writing. Because I, some people just, they need to know and they're expecting to see Jacob when I show up and they don't know. And I will say it's interesting, you know, having a, no matter how close you are to your kids, and I'm pretty close to Jacob, they only tell you as much as they think think you need to know. And guys, I know you're like, no, I have a relationship with my, no, 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 no. That's just not how it works. Think about what you told your parents. Well, no, I had a better relationship. Cool. You're still not, first of all, you don't tell anybody everything. And there are some things you're going to tell your friends and you're not going to tell your parents. But the things you're not going to tell your parents are things that embarrass you. Right? And so I know, I, I found out a lot about Jacob since he's, you know, I found out about his addiction problem. Um, obviously found out about, you know, a lot of the lies. Uh, also found out that I raised a quitter. Who knew? Uh, uh, you know what I'm... <laughs> he's that's 20. A, that, that's a Joey Diaz. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's 27 and he's quitting? I mean, what a pussy. You don't have 10 years left? 27 you're quitting? Come on, man. Uh, but also, yeah, these are just some of the jokes I'm writing. I'm kind of dipping my toe into it. I'm, I think some of the path I'll go down that's been really interesting to me is my level of guilt and responsibility. Um, and, uh, but I have a lot of fun. Uh, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with figuring out how to make this poignant and funny. Um, but in Lexington this week, something happened that has never happened at a show before. This was the most bizarre audience interaction I think I've ever had. There was, now look, if you come to my show, there's a chance that I'll say, hey, is any, anybody's birthday tonight? Happy birthday. Or if somebody reaches out ahead of time, is like, hey, will you wish this person happy birthday? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, but I'm never going to wish somebody happy birthday if their friend screams out, it's Mary's birthday! Ever. Because nobody else in the audience gives a fuck. And guess what, guys? It's a comedy show, not a birthday show. If you open it up, there's going to be other birthdays, other celebrations. And I'm not spending the first seven, ten minutes of my show. But if you scream out, it's Mary's birthday, I'm going to have fun with you. We're going to laugh. I'm going to poke fun a little bit, probably at you and not at Mary. But we're going to move on and it's going to be fun. So there's some scream. There was three women and somebody screamed out, it's Mary's birthday. And, um, nobody responded. And I made a joke about how nobody, clearly nobody gave a fuck. And thank you for sharing. But, uh, you know, I had a little banter and the women were laughing. Everyone's laughing. About 15 minutes later, this woman stands up, stands up like it's a PTA meeting. Like she was going to be like, oh, we need a new speed bump on Thompson Ave. You know what I mean? She stands up. And she's like, are you going to wish her a happy birthday? And I was like, what? I thought, I honestly, guys, thought it was a joke. I thought it was like, I thought we were, I go, what? She goes, are you going to wish her a happy birthday or what? And I said, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Do you know her? And she was like, no. I said, are, are you, I'm trying to decide how to answer this, but are you legitimately upset that I didn't wish a stranger a happy birthday? Are you offended by that? She was like, I am. And guys, I was dumbfounded. She was so, first of all, I want you to know that 
most people who get offended at comedy shows aren't offended at something you said about them. They're offended for other people. It's so crazy. Generally, like if I made a joke about Mexicans, it's usually not the Mexicans who are mad. It's somebody who's not Mexican who's upset for the Mexicans, right? And this woman, this birthday, the birthday police, she was fucking so mad. And I was like, are you seriously mad that I didn't wish her a happy birthday? And as soon as I said that, her husband put his head in his hands and just started shaking his head. And she was like, you're right, I'm mad. And she flipped me off. And guys, there are some people that I'll play with and some people, because I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. And I've been doing this long enough to know oh, this is going to be fun banter or this is just going to be dumb and detrimental to the show. And I said, you know, I'm, I was going to mess around with you, but I think I would just rather say, get the fuck out of here. Let me pay your bill. And I always say this to people who throw who I throw out. I'm going to pay your bill, but you're going to get the fuck out of here right now. Bye-bye-bye. And the crowd fucking erupted. Yay! She was so obnoxious. And the husband was like... And by the way, guys, my favorite part, I did an impersonation of the husband. This is my impersonation of the husband in the car on the way home. No, no, you're right. You're right. No, no, he was, yeah, no, he was an asshole. Yeah. No, you're, you're right. No, he, he should have definitely wished that stranger a happy birthday. I, yeah, no, you're right. No, you're right. I understand. I'm going to do my impersonation of the husband brushing his teeth. No, you're right. You're right. You're hundred percent right. No, you're right. I should not. No, you're right. He was what an asshole, right? No, no, he should have definitely. I'm going to do my impersonation of the husband in bed that night trying to go to sleep. No, no, you're right. No, you're right. No, a hundred. Yeah. Right? He should have just wished her happy birthday. No, you're no, you were a hundred you are you were right in this. You were on the right side of this. You're hundred percent right. I might do my impersonation of the husband the next morning at breakfast. No, you're right. You're right. No, he should have I I was thinking about it all last night too. Yeah, I couldn't sleep either. No, I couldn't sleep. Yeah, I know I heard you talking to me. Yeah, no, you're right. I am positive. This is not the so somebody explained to me. They said they saw them walking to the parking lot and that the dude, that she got in the car and that the dude did like 10 angry laps around the car. <laughs> oh, he knew he had to get mentally prepared for that ear beating he was about to take for that fucking ride home. That was very rarely does somebody get under my skin. And she did because I could just, I don't know why, but then when I threw her out, I felt way better. And then when people clapped, I felt better. And then after she left, just as a fuck you to her, we sang happy birthday to the woman. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, let's sing her happy birthday as a big fuck you to that woman. It was the most ridiculous. I, but I've seen a lot of things, but for someone to get upset, that I did not wish a stranger a happy birthday at a comedy show was definitely a first for me. Not only that, guys, oh, I should have brought this picture in. A guy came to the show. And so the first time he came, he's seen me three times with his son. The first time he came, we took a picture. And it's me. I'm standing next to the guy's son, who was probably 20 at the time, and the dude. And he comes back the next year and he goes, Hey, he goes, Hey, I got an, a picture of from last year. I want to show you. And I said, okay. And I, 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 I like it when people show me like, Oh, this is us last year. Can we recreate this picture or whatever? So he, this next year he hands me the picture and I go, oh, he printed one out and it's an eight by 10. And I, I didn't want to be like, dude, what do you, what do you expect me to do of this picture of me and you and your kid? And I go, oh, thanks. He goes, no, no, don't throw it out. Just look at it first. And I look at it and I, it's me guys. My, in this picture, my 
dick looks like it's a flaccid nine inches. It is the craziest picture. And I was like, whoa. And he goes, right? And I go, holy shit. And he said, I, I thought you'd want that picture. And I was like, no, 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 no. Thank, and thanks for making it bigger. He was like, yeah, dude, I wasn't bringing you a tiny one. I was bringing you a legit eight, eight by 10. Jacob was there, right? And I go, hey, Jacob, what do you think about this picture? And he looks at it for a second. He goes, what, what, oh my God. It, it is like the craziest cock shot. So he said, I have it on my wall and I circled it. It's framed. I go, you don't even need to circle it. The dick circles itself. And he was like, dude, I totally get it. It is the, it is like, I almost thought about using it as my promo pick. Not, I, I don't know if it would bring more people to the show, but it just, you know, when people did come to the show, I think all they'd be thinking is, is his dick really that big? And I showed Beth the picture and she goes, your dick doesn't look like that. I'm like, you couldn't just let me. This is, that's the first thing you wanted to say that my dick doesn't look like that. A flaccid nine, a soft nine, soft nine, not a terrible name for a band or an album, soft nine, but, but it was this, so this dude came back again and he, he was like, Hey, do you remember us? I'm like, no. Nah. And he goes, I gave you a picture last year. I go, I totally remember you. Totally remember you and your son. Yep. It was absolutely amazing. They've been three years in a row. And, uh, what, uh, oh, Matt, I also wrote a new parody, um, that I think is going to take over the world. Um, instead of, I want it that way, you know, I want it that way. The song is called bring back the word gay. And the song is amazing. I have written a bunch of, uh, I've written a few verses. Um, I just don't know how, how long, how long I'll have the song be, but it is to me, my Magnus Opus. Is that the right? Magnum Opus. Magnum Opus. Magnus Opus. Doesn't sound as good. That's I, like a gladiator name. Magnus Opus. Yeah. yeah. Magnum Opus. I also at this place in Lexington is a, is the place where I was a little fucked up one night and had to get talked out of fighting a swan. I think I could take one swan. I've been told that I can't. I'm not saying I wouldn't take some damage, but you tell me a swan would kill me? Fuck you. I would at least be able to grab it by the neck one time. And as soon as I get that neck, I'm wrenching it. Now, I might, I might take some damage, and I definitely would go in wearing some goggles because I think they'd go straight eye shot. Right? I think they're going eye shot. And I might have to go heavy goggle. And I think they're probably faster than me and it would hurt a lot. But I think I could grab, I would, you tell me I can't jump on top of a goose. It's coming at me. I'm coming at it. It's coming. And I've seen them. They come like, Ugh. so it's coming and I'm running straight at it. It might get me with a couple pow, pow, but I'm going to jump on top of it. I'm going to fuck a goose up. I'm going to fuck a goose up. Now, two geese, I don't know how that works. I'm not sure if they're like coyotes and wolves where they do better in packs. One goose, fuck you. I'm going to fuck a goose up. Not, I'm not saying I won't take a little damage. Now, I, I have taken a step back. I thought I could beat up a bighorn sheep too. Um, and then I saw a video of what they do. Not as confident in me taking a bighorn sheep. I thought I could jump over it when it was running at me. Don't know if I could do that now. My whole goal, my whole, here's my whole strategy is to get it, get it on. If I got on its back, I think I got it because I would choke it out. Right? I don't know if it's got a neck, but I would gouge its eyes and, and they don't really bite. They just fucking gunk. Maybe they bite, but I think if I could get uh, on a bighorn sheep's back, but after I've seen the videos, I think it would be harder to get on its back. Uh, so I'm going to retract the bighorn sheep, but goose swan fucking one up and one coyote fucking up a coyote too. coyotes, a single coyote, not super dangerous unless you're dealing with a tiny dog or a baby. Have you seen the video of the coyote taking the baby out of the back of the car in the Valley in California? Fucking crazy, dude. 
coyotes in in Calif- in in LA in particular are very methy. They 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 look like they would suck your dick for a choco taco. Like they are they're mangy. The ones out here look like like real coyotes. Yeah, they look like Balto. Is there a difference between coyotes and dingoes? A dingo is in Australia and I I so I think there is a difference. I don't I think I don't know. I I I don't know if you know this but zoology not really my your forte wheelhouse yeah. yeah i'll give you an educated guess i think a dingo has a has a when it howls probably has an australian accent it goes <laughs> good day matey or whatever it does uh but yeah i i and dingoes are the have like a movie made after it and coyotes don't wasn't meryl streep in a dingo stole my baby I don't know. I think it was a Meryl Streep. I, I like to think it was Meryl Streep. Why would Meryl Streep be in a movie called The Dingo Stole My Baby? I, I, <laughs> I, I got to Google. I think the name of the movie is a dingo, a dingo, dingo stole my baby. I think that's a meme actually. But I think it comes from a movie or a TV movie. One of the two. I may not, I may be wrong about Meryl Streep. It doesn't feel like a Meryl Streep type if she gets a script that said Dingo stole my baby, I'm not sure that she's like, I need to read this. So uh, Dingo ate my baby. Ate my baby. Is a phrase associated with the 1980 death of Azaria Chamberlain, an Australian baby girl who was taken from her tent by a dingo while her family was camping at Uluru in the Northern Territory. Well, what's the movie associated with that? Wasn't there a TV, straight to TV? Or maybe I'm just thinking about that. Dingo ate my baby. But how did they get that quote? She said it on the news or something? Something like that. Let me look up the movie. I, 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 I don't know why that's a full movie. It feels like just a scene in a movie. Do they hunt the dingo? Okay, so the movie was called A Cry in the Dark. It was in 1988, and it did star Meryl Streep and Sam Neill. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> yeah! Fucking Meryl Streep with an Australian accent saying, I'm sure, you because I remember the commercial. Dingo ate my baby. The dingo took my baby. It says, many people have heard the phrase, the dingo took my baby, popularized wrongly as a dingo ate my baby. A Cry in the Dark, a.k.a. Evil Angels, tells the story of the death of Azaria Chamberlain, a nine-week-old baby who disappeared during a camping trip in Australia. But what's the story once the dingo takes the baby? Is it just how it destroys the family? You know what I mean? Like, it feels like a really... So it says, as the family mourn and attempt to get back to what might be a normal life, there are months of investigation culminating in the Chamberlains being charged for the murder of the baby and facing a court case. Why? Did, what they, they, do they smother the baby in honey? Like, do, what did they do to murder like, the baby? Negligence, I guess. All right. I mean, if you're in the bush... You know what I mean? Lindy is charged with murder and the focus of the prosecution. She remains strong and stoic while Michael struggles emotionally, verging on a nervous break. Yeah, no shit. Anyways. Uh, Dingo ain't my baby. But I knew that was Meryl Streep. D -d -d Tell me something. Did you think I was 100% wrong on the Meryl Streep? No, I didn't. Um, I, I just thought you were wrong on the title of the movie. Yeah, I definitely was wrong on the title. <laughs> Because it sounds like something Meryl Streep would say. Yeah, dingo ate my baby. I, um, I, you know, I, I, uh, but a couple of things, by the way, that you all should be watching. Penguin on Max is, I think we've talked about how good it is. I watched Deadpool versus Wolverine. And I'm going to tell you something as a huge fan of Deadpool and those movies a bit overrated. It was too much Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds for me. It was too much joke. It was too much breaking the fourth wall. It was too much to me anyways, of what made the original movie so great and so different. It was like that times a million. It was still good. And maybe because all I had heard about was how great it was. 
I think that's a danger when you go see movies and all you've ever heard is this the best movie ever, best movie ever, best movie ever. It just had too much of what I think makes it good. And I he started to get a little, and I've never said this ever, because I think he's fucking amazing and one of the most charming dudes in the world and super handsome and makes me happy to go to movies. He makes me happy to watch him. He seems to have such joy doing it. And even me, I was like, okay, dude, let's shut the fuck up just a little bit and let's just do the movie, you know? And so that was a little, I can't believe I'm saying it, but it was a little too much for me. Uh, Is it still a good movie? Sure. Is it the A plus that everybody said it was in my eyes? No, but to me, it just shows you how shitty movies have been, have been recently for everybody to be like, this is the best movie ever. Yeah. Compared to the other pieces of shit that have been out. Agreed. Agreed. Um, but I was not disappointed, but yeah, I watched it at the house. You can't be disappointed with a movie that you watch at the house. I'd have been disappointed if I'd gone to the movies, but I think I just heard a little too much. I did love the human tour, the, uh, Johnny blaze. I, I loved that. Honestly, he, I thought he was a better human torch than he was Captain America. And that's saying something because he was the perfect Captain America, but he was so fucking good as the human torch in that first fantastic four. I was like, Oh, this dude, I remember watching thinking this dude is the fucking tits. He is making great jokes. His attitude's great, great abs. You know what I mean? So big fan, big fan. Did you ever see not another teen movie? Yeah. Uh, I think that was like his first film. Yeah. Uh, listen, dude, I'm a big fan of his, man. I'm a big fan of his. Have you seen, I don't know if you guys have seen him, Chris Pratt and Jimmy Fallon photo bombing people. It's hilarious. That's so funny. Anyways. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've been watching or anything else I want to keep you guys up to date with. I don't think so. There are a couple of news articles as usual. I'd like to get to, if I may. Um, I will get back to the emails that you sent to the Hey Man pod. Remember, if you send me a email to the Hey Man pod at gmail.com and that's man with three A's, Hey Man pod at gmail.com and I read it, you get two free tickets to a show in your area. Um, also, if you are somebody who can't afford to come to one of my shows, if you're having troubles you want to reconnect, you want to bring your kids, you want to have a family night, not something you can do, you're a single parent, you want to reconnect with your brother or your sister, or you just need a night out, but you can't afford it. I would love to be able to provide that for you. I love having families at my shows. Um, It's super cool. Truly one of my favorite things uh, to see a table of people with the same last name, having a good time. Um, So remember, heymanpod at gmail.com. Um, to reach out for that, I'll, I'm giving away 10 free tickets, um, per weekend. So I, I, I would love it for, if they went to one of you. All right, guys, let's get over to a couple of these, um, news articles that have caught my eye in the first one. And I, you know, I thought I was going to be able to make it through a whole podcast without mentioning, because Jacob did say to me before he left that. I do talk about dicks a lot and I thought I was going to get past dicks. Did I mention dicks? That whole photo story though. Ah, damn it. I thought we were going to be dickless. Five minutes of dick right there. <laughs> five minutes of dick, dude. Also, uh, basically describes my entire sex career. Yeah. Good band name. Too. Yeah. Five minutes of dick. Yeah, for sure. There was a guy, by the way, also, it, there was a father-son that I met in Lexington. The father's name was Richard, and the kid's name was Peter. And I was like, is this on purpose? Are you pranking me right now? Are you telling me Dick and Peter are here? So I, I was like, what's your last name, Johnson? This is crazy. Do you know what I mean? I, I almost asked what the mom's first name was, but I didn't want to get... Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but we, we got to get to a couple of... And I, I didn't want to bring this up, but I can't help it. It's such a good news article. This is because I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, 
the the title of this article is what happens when you hold in a fart. First of all, who holds in farts? You know, to me, the more uncomfortable the situation, the better. Now, I will say this. Farting on a plane is a real dick move, but one that I can't say that I haven't done. I've been sleeping on a plane and farted myself awake. And farting yourself awake is startling. Because you know who else wakes up is the person next to you. I farted myself awake on a plane once. It, because here's the deal. When you're, when you're in some of the older planes, especially back in coach, the seats are, are cloth. So they're like office chairs like these. And you can really, when you get on chairs like this, you can, if your whole butthole is over the cushion, you can fart into the cushion and it kind of le it just, it collects in the cushion like a fart purse. And then it, the, it's the next person who comes and sits on the cushion and it all comes up at once and it's like, Whoa! right? But it's, it's a fun little joke and you can do it at the office, but you can also fart into the cushion and it collects them. You know, like infinity stones and, and that way you, you know, but when you're up in first class with the big boys, they get those leather seats and you know what? Leather is not, it reverberates against your butt cheeks. And so there was one time I was sleeping and I farted and I huh, started myself awake and I turned and there was a dude sitting next to me. He was just staring at me just, and I go, Hey, sorry about that. And he goes, not your first one, bro. And I was like, oh, boy. And he told me, he was like, hey, you plan on going back to sleep? I go, I don't think so. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. Because I, I, look, man, you might fart on a plane, but you can't, you can't, no, you can't, out, you, you have to be sneaky. You know, it's like, you got to be sneaky about it. You can't just be, because we're all trapped in there. It's, on the, it's in the tube, you know? And it gets sucked up and then it gets spread in the back. People are not going to be happy. So, yeah. But I, other than that, I'm not, a good, I'm not good at holding in farts because I think they're funny. And generally what I'll do is I, I enjoy a silent crop dust. Like if I'm out at a restaurant and I have to fart, I'll make sure I stand up, walk, fart as I'm walking through the restaurant and make my way back to the table. And I'll tell whoever I'm with, just watch people's faces. And you can see, <laughs> you can see people like, cause they'll just be sitting there and then they're just like, but you can see a trail. It's like dominoes, ding, 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 and just heads, but they never know it's me, which is great. Um, but I love a crop dust. Um, I love farting in a movie theater. Although those are, those are good cushion seats too. Um, but I'm generally not a fart holder in her cause it, they, one, it, I think they're funny and two, it makes me uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm, you know, and, and, and I've smelled enough farts in public to know I'm not the only one. That being said, what happens when you hold in a fart by, Ooh, this is not who I thought it would be by, this is by Sierra Boucher. I was not expecting a woman. I don't mean to sound sexist, but I didn't expect to see Sierra, a French woman, writing a writing a story about farts. Oh, ooh, ooh, you know. Imagine being on a first date when you feel the need to toot your own horn. Pass gas. The average person releases about 0.5 to 1.5 liters of gas a day. Whoa. So. I, you tell me I, I fill up a liter of, how do you measure that? How do you measure that, Sierra Boucher? How do you measure the amount of gas by an average person? How many people have to fart in a bag in a controlled area to make it seem like this is the average amount? That, I, that, see, stats like that, I just can't, you know what I mean? How are you? Okay. I think it's based off of how much the average person eats. 
Yeah, but everybody's intestines is different. Some people are farty McFartison and some people don't. All right. Most of these farts are odorless. Speak for yourself, Sierra. <laughs> what do you mean most of these farts are odorless? Who are you hanging around with? The French? There's no way the French farts are odorless. I ate so much cheese. Tell me, th- get out of here, Sierra Boucher. Yeah, you, you're just trying to, that's like you saying your farts don't smell. Get. There are some that it's hard for it to be completely odorless just because of where it's coming out of. Do you know what I mean? It's passing through the butthole. It's going to have some sort of, now some of them don't smell that bad. I guess some don't smell. But I wouldn't say most are odorless. That's, that is a, that is, I mean, not in my house, not where I grew up. My mom and dad farted, you know, my, my dad kicked my mom out of the car once on the freeway. She was farting so much. My, listen, my grandfather, I remember sitting at lunch with him once and, uh, it was me and probably two of my brothers and the server came up. And as he was ordering eye contact, he was just, and you know, like that old person fart that just, and usually it happens when they walk. Like when you get older, everybody, there's, you're going to walk and fart in a really uncomfortable way where you don't know if it's voluntary or if it's just falling out of you. You know? I told, I asked my grandfather once, I'm like, yo. And he was like, I can't help it. It just falls out. I'm like, falls out? Ugh. But he was just eye contact and she was, God bless her. She was doing the best she could with this old dude just farting up. And we were all just sitting there like, uh, are we allowed to do that? Eye contact farting with a server? And when she walked away, we, the table was silent. And he was like, I'm, I'm going to die soon. I'm not holding in farts. And I was like, good for you. Shit. That's my attitude right now. I'm going to die soon. I'm not holding in farts. You know? Um, so most of these farts are odorless. Whatever. It's rarely acceptable to take the chance. What's the chance? The chance, listen, the chance is the one you push out a little bit because it could be a shart. That's the chancy one. But I think you know which ones are chancy. I, as much as you're surprised by a shart, I don't think you're ever really surprised by it because you know some farts, there's no, you're like, oh, this is, there's no risk here. But some, generally for me, in the times that I've sharted, it's always been, should I? You know what I mean? Mm. This feels like I could get out a little bit of this one, you know? So I don't know. Sierra Boucher, are, we're half of a paragraph in, and I'm already not super excited about your article. Whether in the workplace or with friends, which is the two best times to fart, with friends, workplace, amazing, dude. Are you kidding? An office to to, to truly just drag a fart around the office is amazing. It's amazing. We all clench our cheeks from time to time. Um, what does holding in flatulence do to our bodies? Well, um, it doesn't seem to do anything very bad except cause discomfort. Yeah, this. Listen, basically what this article is telling me is that everybody farts and that when you hold it in, it makes you uncomfortable, but, uh, it is not terrible for you. There you go, everybody. That is their natural way. The body. Okay. Of course the body's trying to push the gas out. Can you injure yourself by never passing gas? Yes. The same way you can injure yourself by never pooping. Who is never, who's holding it in that much? Because that feels like your stomach would become like a balloon that you could, you know, when you squeeze a balloon, it just goes that I am now curious. Because, 
Mm. Should I hold them in for a full day and see what happens? If I hold them in for a full day and then just Dutch oven bath at the very end of the night, this feels like an experiment I'm interested in. All right, everybody, I'll report back on that one. That's an IRL stream right there. That is. I really think it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna, guys, uh, I'll let you know how that goes. A Sierra Boucher is not from French, France, by the way. She's from Washington, DC. Um, all right. Let's do okay. How about this one? I like that one. Archaeology breakthrough is world's oldest oldest cheese found on mummy's necklace. A b- bizarre cheese necklace found on a 3,500-year-old mummy has rewritten an important part of human history related to the development of dairy farming. What you guys don't know is this is a Chinese, uh, this is a, oh, a, a, an old Chinese person. And what really shocked me the most is that there's no cheese in Chinese food. The, the, there's no like chicken chow mein with cheese. There's no, I, I've never been to a Chinese restaurant where I remember seeing cheese on the menu. So what was it doing around this person's neck, which is what is bizarre to me. I don't quite understand. Is there a year where the Chinese people just decided, you know what? Oh, here it is. Into the region's dairy producing past the bronze age. There is there, is there a reason why Cheese was put around the neck. That's the real question. It was odd that it was made into jewelry. Yeah. Cheese jewelry feels like something um, that you make in grade school. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want a cheese necklace and chocolate milk water fountains. Like, that feels like... So, to put that around someone's neck, I don't know if that was a sign of respect or a sign of a fuck you. I love how we... Today, we'll uncover something like this, and then we'll put our own meaning on it. It meant that they, you know, it meant that the ancient Chinese people had a relationship with cows where it meant that they were the, we don't fucking know. It could have been a joke. This person's brother could have been like, they hated cheese so much, bury him with it. And now, 2,000 years later, we're like, the cheese was important to Chinese people. No. The brother was playing a fucking goof. He was like, let's bury him with this stinky cheese. You know? But I... I, if I, It is interesting that it's the oldest cheese in recorded history. 3,500 years old. Cheese. Cheese. But but, but well, I like that we're trying to give it meaning. Maybe they were like, you know what? He enjoyed cheese so much. You know what? Some people like to get buried with their favorite pen or like a game. This Chinese person enjoyed cheese. And they buried him with it. I don't know why it has to have meaning, you know? I, I, I If I was going to pick one food to get buried with. <sighs> okay. I do. It's honestly between steak and Skittles. I know that. I is, think Skittles would last longer. I know Skittles would definitely. I could get buried with a Twinkie and somebody could dig me up and be like, find you 5,000 years later with those Skittles. Maybe that's what they were doing. They were trying to send cheese to the gods. Right. And they were like, you know, the gods like cheese, but it still doesn't explain why there's no cheese in any Chinese food. Am I, am I wrong? Can you think of a cheesy Chinese dish? Don't say Chinese chicken salad, because I believe that is from the bare naked ladies. Isn't crab rangoon. Don't they have um, cream cheese in that? Is that Thai? Does that technically count as Chinese? Thai is not Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just hearing that come out of your mouth. <laughs> it's East Asian. Yeah. But... <laughs> Definitely not Chinese for sure. Um, all right, guys. Listen, this was a needed. Uh, distraction today. I want to just tell you how much I appreciate all of you. And um, next week we're going to have a guest um, and hopefully one uh, not hopefully one, but it'll be one that we're all super excited to hear from. 
Um, and then I'll have another update with Jakey next week. Um, I'll just, you know, uh, let you know as he goes, um, how much he wants me to share. Um, but besides that, remember everybody, fourstoriescomedy.com for the special. You can go to wolfcomedy.com if you want to win two tickets and airfare to a show somewhere in the continental U.S. Um, again, on the podcast, I know I say it a million times, so does every other podcaster. But if you really want to help, download, rate, subscribe. And on top of that, guys, I will be back next week with a guest, comedianjoshwolf.com for all tour dates. Um, thank you all so much for your support. My head will be screwed on t a little tighter next week. Uh, and we'll talk to you then. Later. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.